So then, then let's move on to the next topic. That is conduction of heat. Okay, transfer of heat. So heat transfer can happen in three ways, and those three types of heat transfer are known as conduction, convection, and radiation. Okay, so all three are shown in this diagram. So what is conduction? So if there is a direct contact between heat source and a body, okay. So here, see this is source of heat and i don't know why but this person is putting this metal rod okay in the heat source right in the flame directly but he he is wearing uh, some insulating hand gloves so it should not be a problem anyways but he is doing that so what happens is the heat is conducted okay through this metal rod and it goes from higher to lower temperature so temperature on this side would be low temperature on this side would be higher and how does the heat conduct it's because of vibrations of molecules see in solids there would be uh, molecules vibrating okay the molecules inside the solid they will be vibrating so they will have some energy right so if molecules are vibrating slowly means their energy is less we say that that is a cold body and if molecules are vibrating fast so that means they have higher energy okay if you touch that object so you will you will feel hot right so it is energy of those molecules right they are vibrating faster so here what will happen so as you put this object that means you put the metal rod metal rod okay inside the flame so then what happens is the molecules at this end they begin to vibrate very fast then they will collide with the molecules of nearby molecules okay and they will give part of their energy to the nearby molecules then they will give part of their energy to the nearby molecules and in this way what happens the energy is transferred from one end to another end and that's how the temperature will rise okay so this phenomenon is known as conduction okay transfer of heat by means of vibrations of molecules in a solid okay mostly this happens in a solid right this thing is clear it will surely not happen in gases because okay gases are very rare and the molecules will not collide onto each other right okay so this is conduction the next is convection now this person so this in winter season we also do this okay i mean the person wants to uh, take some heat from this heat source okay he wants to warm up his hands his body so he puts his hands not directly into the flame okay but at some distance right at some distance above the flame so what's happening here is what's happening in this case is see the air which is just above the flame it becomes hotter okay so when it becomes hot because of the flame right it becomes hot its density would decrease okay so when density decreases that means its weight decreases it becomes lighter it moves up okay and cold air will move down in case of conduction there is no actual transfer of molecules here this air molecules they are taking heat from uh, this fire and they are moving up and then that heat moves up okay in the surrounding region so this is known as convection right so there is actual movement of particles or actual movement of uh, you can say the the medium okay the medium is actually moving so this is second way and then there is third way called as radiation so radiation is what these are electromagnetic waves just like light is a form of radiation okay light is form of radiation okay so these are electromagnetic waves okay so heat is radiated so here the medium is not moving what is moving some waves are moving electromagnetic waves are moving from the source of fire 
towards this person actually they will move in all directions okay so these are three forms of heat transfer the conduction convection and radiation okay so let's talk about them in a little bit more detail so first one conduction so suppose you have these two uh, heat sources you can say or these two reservoirs we say them reservoir we call them reservoir okay so what is a reservoir this is a very big object at high temperature t2 this is another big object at low temperature t1 so because those are big objects therefore if some little heat flows flows out from this object and flows into this object the temperature won't change much because they are very big okay we call them reservoirs right then a metal slab is kept in between these two that means it's connecting this first reservoir and second second reservoir okay so this is body a let's say this is reservoir a this is reservoir b it is at temperature t2 and this one is at temperature t1 okay and they are connected by a metal slab so now what happens so this side of the metal slab it is connected to this reservoir which is at high temperature other side is connected to the reservoir as at low temperature so now the atoms or molecules over here which is in con which are in contact with the hot reservoir they begin to vibrate because they are taking the heat they are taking energy from the hot reservoir okay so it has got heat means what there are molecules of the hot reservoir they are vibrating with very high energies okay so that's why you are gaining uh you are getting energy you means molecules of this metal slab okay atoms or molecules they are getting energy right so then they gain energy they begin to vibrate with very high high speeds they collide with nearby molecules they also begin to vibrate with higher speeds and then they will collide with another nearby molecules they also vibrate with higher speeds in this way the energy gets transferred from these molecules to the nearby molecules to the nearby molecules to the nearby molecules to the nearby molecules and therefore the energy gets transferred in this way from this side to that side that means from hot body to cold body okay by means of vibrations of molecules of the medium so this transfer of heat is known as conduction okay is the conduction clear everyone right so this is conduction then now see we'll define thermal conductivity of material so suppose delta q is the heat flowing from hot to cold body that means from hot to cold reservoir okay so delta q is the amount of heat that flows okay and delta t is the difference in temperature between them now this is like a common sense that more is the difference in temperature more amount of heat will flow okay so amount of heat that's flowing it's directly proportional to the difference in temperatures okay the amount of heat flowing is directly proportional to the area of this medium right amount of heat flowing is directly proportional to area area of the uh, medium that means area of the metal slab why is it so it's because if there is less area that means less number of molecules will vibrate you can say okay let's say 100 molecules vibrate so if you take twice as much uh, the area then 200 molecules will vibrate okay in that region so heat conduction would be twice so amount of heat conducted would be directly proportional to area also it's directly proportional to the time also delta t is the time for which uh, for which the heat is flowing okay and it's inversely proportional to the length right it's inversely proportional to length okay because suppose there is some speed of uh, heat conduction so to go at larger distance you will need what more time right is this thing clear everyone
yes no okay so if you combine all of these then what do you get you get delta q is proportional to a times delta t upon l times delta t the small delta t is what delta small t is change in time okay and delta capital t is difference between a difference in temperature between hot and cold body okay so therefore we can say the delta q is equal to some constant k and this k is known as coefficient of thermal conduction or simply thermal conductivity okay thermal conductivity it is known as thermal conductivity so delta q is equal to k times a delta t upon l times delta t delta t is the time the small delta t is time okay so then what you can do is you can move this delta t on this side and you can write delta q by delta t so heat conducted per unit time okay heat conducted per unit time is equal to whatever remains right so that is equal to k times a delta t a a times delta capital t upon l okay so amount of heat conducted per unit time is equal to k times a delta t divided by l okay so this side you will remember as amount of heat conducted per unit time you can call it delta q by delta t or dq by dt okay you can call it dq by dt also okay it is equal to k times a k a by l times delta t or t2 minus t1 this thing is clear yes no okay so now see we can relate this thing to the or uh, to the flow of electric current and it becomes very simple see how so suppose this is a conductor you have connected some battery to the conductor then we know that current is the rate of flow of charge per unit time okay what is the electric current through the conductor it is rate of flow of charge per unit time and then we know the ohm's law ohm's law says that the current is directly proportional to potential difference okay current flowing through the conductor is directly proportional to what potential difference and the proportionality constant between them so i can be written as dq by dt okay so proportionality constant is r and this is the ohm's law that v is equal to i times r okay v is equal to what i times r or you can say that i times r is equal to v that means dq by dt times r is equal to v this is the ohm's law right and r is called as resistance of the conductor okay r is called as resistance of the conductor resistance is the opposition to the flow of current it's directly proportional to length it's inversely proportional to area of cross section okay and it's proportional to okay, i'm just recalling this concept okay r is proportional to what l by a and then you put a uh, equality sign remove this proportionality sign so again a constant will come so that constant is known as resistivity okay constant is known as what resistivity so you get r is equal to rho times l by a rho times l upon a right and then you know that conductivity is equal to what conductivity is 1 upon resistivity okay so is everyone familiar with these concepts okay so after that so let's see the similarity between the flow of heat and flow of electric current okay all right so delta t is analogous to v so what is delta t delta t is difference in temperatures okay it is analogous means it's similar to what it is similar to the difference in potential potential difference okay dq by dt is analogous to dq by dt means this is flow of heat per unit time this is flow of charge per unit time and they are analogous means they are similar okay then see our formula for heat, heat conduction can be written like this so in this formula you can just move these things on other side so if i do that i can say delta t is equal to see delta t would be equal to dq by dt or delta q by delta t times 
L by K A. If these things go on other side, L will go to the numerator, K A will go to the denominator. Okay. So we have written it that way. Delta T is equal to L by K A times dQ by dt. Difference in temperature is equal to L by K A times dQ by dt. And this is analogous to V is equal to R i, which can be written as what? R is rho times L upon A. Right? R is rho times L upon A. So if this thing is similar to this thing, this thing is similar to this thing. Okay, this thing means temperature difference is similar to potential difference. Then the heat current, we can call it heat current, flow of heat per unit time. Heat current is proportional to, oh, sorry, analogous to the charge current. Okay, this is similar to this one. Then this term has to be similar to this one. And you can see, you can spot the similarity here itself. It is L by K A and it's, it is similar to what? rho times l upon a so l upon a l upon a factor is there so this 1 by k is similar to what it is similar to rho so we can say that this thing is thermal resistance l by k a is thermal resistance just like this rho times l by a is the electrical resistance okay so electric resistance is rho times l by a which can be written as See, we know that rho is equal to 1 by sigma, okay, 1 by conductivity, 1 divided by conductivity. So, electric resistance can be written as L divided by sigma into A. Similarly, the thermal resistance can be written as uh, L divided by what? K times A. And then this becomes our Ohm's law for thermal conduction. So, what is this thing? This is Ohm's law for thermal conduction. Okay. Okay, or I will write it here Ohm's law for thermal conduction. Okay, is this thing clear to everyone? Tell me. Okay, so this is Ohm's law for thermal conduction. Delta T is equal to thermal resistance times dQ by dt. So now this becomes very simple to remember. Delta T is equal to thermal resistance. This is thermal resistance times dQ by dt. Okay. So I will just write it here. Delta T is equal to thermal resistance RTH. Okay times dq by dt delta t is equal to the thermal resistance times dq by dt you can say thermal current And what is thermal resistance? So thermal resistance is L divided by K A. Okay, is this thing clear? Tell me. Yes, no. All right. Good. Okay. So conductivity of two slabs connected together. Okay either in series or in parallel so this is parallel combination right this is parallel combination so conductivity of first slab thermal conductivity is k1 conductivity of second one is k2 okay so heat that flows through first slab in some time can be written as dq1 by dt it's equal to k1 a1 delta t by l okay k1 a1 delta t by l k upon l times delta t is the formula right so it is k1 a1 delta t divided by l and heat flowing through the second slab can be written as dq2 by dt it's equal to k2 a2 by l times delta t now you might say why l is same 
so l is same because the both bodies they should be in contact with the hot and cold reservoir so i am taking l equal and in most of the problems l would be equal right two slabs are parallel so what can i say the total heat conducted is suppose dq by dt okay so it can be written as kp kp is the thermal conductivity of parallel combination of these two slabs times a a would be the total area area of first one is a1 area of second one is a2 so the total area of this composite slab okay combination of these two slabs total area is equal to a1 plus a2 right that i am calling a so dq by dt through this composition is equal to kp times a by l into delta t right kp is the resultant conductivity kp is what it is resultant thermal conductivity okay so not just conductivity thermal conductivity right so then what you can say is total amount of heat conducted is equal to heat conducted through the first slab plus heat conducted through the second slab right and then you put this formula of heat conducted then what happens is okay just like in case of uh, current electricity you have potential difference common okay in parallel combination here temperature difference is common right so here delta t delta t delta t gets cancelled and we took their length equal so length of the composite slab would also be equal that is l <coughs> sorry so that l l l would get cancelled out and what remains is kp times a okay kp times a is equal to k1 a1 plus k2 a2 or you can move that this area on other side so you get k is equal to k1 a1 plus k2 a2 divided by area right k1 a1 plus k2 a2 divided by area okay and what is area area is just equal to a1 plus a2 is this thing clear everyone okay so two slabs are kept in parallel then what is their conductivity conductivity just equal to k1 a1 plus k2 a2 divided by a1 plus a2 okay very simple formula right so this is parallel combination and then there would be series combination so in series combination what can we do so uh, see just like electrical resistance we can say that the thermal resistance also gets added in the series combination so total resistance total resistance would be equal to what total resistance is resistance of first lab <coughs> sorry <coughs> resistance of first lab plus resistance of second slab total resistance is resistance of first lab plus resistance of second slab and here we are considering that their areas are equal okay area of cross section is equal okay so then you know that resistance is directly proportional to length inversely proportional to area okay and thermal resistance we have written as l by k a right thermal resistance we have written as l by k a so resistance of this slab would be what its length times uh, sorry divided by k a that is k1 into a in denominator okay length of this one is l1 divided by k1 into a plus length of this one is what l2 divided by k2 into a so this is our r1 this is our r2 and suppose resistance thermal resistance of this composite slab is rs so rs can be written as total length divided by divided by uh, thermal conductivity of this composite slab we are calling it as ks because this is series combination upon a and here we are considering that area is equal so a a a gets cancelled okay so what remains is what remains is l1 plus l2 or the total length total length by ks is equal to l1 by k1 plus l2 by k2 okay total length l total by ks is equal to l1 by k1 plus l2 by k2 and whenever we want we can just substitute the values 
ओके एल टोटल बाय के एस इज इक्वल टू एल वन बाय के वन प्लस एल टू बाय के टू दिस वन इज सिंपल राइट नाउ लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द प्रॉब्लम्स एंड लेट्स सी दिस वन टू रॉड्स ए एंड बी ऑफ डिफरेंट मटेरियल्स आर वेल्डेड टुगेदर एज शोन इन द फिगर the thermal conductivities their thermal conductivities are k1 and k2 the thermal conductivity of composite rod will be okay tell me they are made up of different materials length is equal this is given but are they talking about the area of cross section area of cross section they are not talking about yeah but this is parallel combination we know so what would be k or kp we know that is k1 a1 plus k2 a2 k2 a2 divided by k1 a1 plus a2 right a1 plus a2 so here i guess we need to assume that area of cross section is equal because it looks like it's equal okay and it's not given explicitly that areas are equal okay so i will just assume it over here but this can be disputed right so let's say a1 is equal to a2 so a1 is equal to a2 is equal to a if we do that what do we get so k1 times a plus k2 times a a can be taken common so a times k1 plus k2 and in denominator you will have Two times of a because a one is equal to a two, it's equal to a. A gets cancelled, and then what remains is it's just equal to k one plus k two divided by two. Right, so it is option D. Is this thing clear, everyone? Right. Okay, very good. Let's see next one. Two ends of metal rod are maintained at temperatures 100 degrees Celsius and 110 degrees Celsius. The rate of heat flow in the rod is found to be 4 joules per second. Okay. If the ends are maintained at temperatures of 200 degrees Celsius and 210 degrees Celsius, the rate of heat flow will be. okay so in first case delta t1 the difference in temperatures is 110 minus 100 so that is 10 degrees celsius and in second case also the difference in temperatures between the two ends is 210 degrees celsius okay 210 is the final temperature and initial is uh, not initial final one end is at 200 degrees celsius another end is at 210 degrees celsius so the temperature difference here is also also what uh 10 degrees celsius the temperature difference here is also 10 degrees celsius right so if temperature differences are equal it's the same rod maintained uh at its two ends are maintained at two different temperatures in first case 110 and 100 in second case 210 and 200 so temperature difference is equal that means heat conduction would be equal right because everything else will be a constant yes no delta t can be written as what l by k a times dq by dt okay so if delta t is same l is the length a is area of cross section k is thermal conductivity this thing is constant right so if delta t is same in both cases that means dq by dt would be same okay so it is 4 joules per second this is clear everyone okay great all right let's see next one two metal rods a and b of same lengths have same temperature difference between their ends okay two metal rods a and b 
same length same temperature difference between their ends the thermal conductivities are k1 and k2 and cross sectional areas a1 and a2 respectively rate of heat conduction in one is four times that in two then okay this is simple temperature difference is same delta t is same delta t1 let's say is equal to delta t2 so what can we say l by k a okay length is equal same length so first let's write l1 by k1 a1 okay times dq1 by dt is equal to l2 by k2 a2 dq2 by dt because we know that delta t is equal to l by k a times dq by dt right this is our formula okay so temperature difference is equal that's why we can write it this way right so then what's given lengths are equal so let's cancel out lengths and what else is given if rate of heat conduction in one is four times that in two so we can cancel out that too or i can write this thing as four times of dq by dt dq2 by dt right this is four times of dq2 by dt so 1 by k1 a1 is equal to 1 by k2 a2 times dq2 by dt and then you can cancel out dq2 by dt on both sides okay you could do it here itself this is four four times right and then what do you get is uh, just move this k1 a1 on this side k2 a2 on this side so you get k1 a1 is equal to four times of k2 a2 k1 a1 is four times of k2 a2 it's option a this one is clear right okay very good then let's see next one a slab of stone of area 0.36 meter square and thickness 0.1 meter is exposed on lower surface to the steam at 100 degrees celsius and block of ice at 0 degrees celsius rest on the upper surface so you have slab of stone so this is slab of stone okay and this is slab of stone at lower surface there is steam okay so there is steam at lower surface right there is steam here and a block of ice at 0 degree celsius rest at the upper surface so there is block of ice here which is at 0 degree celsius okay then in one hour 4.8 kg of ice is melted in one hour 4.8 kg of ice is melted the thermal conductivity of slab is okay so tell me what to do what's given in one hour in one hour so we can find out heat conducted right so it would be just equal to mass times latent heat of ice latent heat of fusion of ice because he, uh, what is happening ice is melting okay so this is happening in one hour and time is equal to what let's say delta q is equal to m times l delta t the time is equal to what one hour right and then we have our usual formula the delta t is equal to l by k a but here it will not be this l the difference between them is what this is our l now right this would be l so l by k a times of uh, delta q by delta t then we can put the values we want thermal conductivity you no know? move this on this side and what is uh, difference in temperatures so it is just 100 right this is at 0 degree celsius this one steam is at 100 degree celsius so this is just 100 
anyways let's move it on other side so we get k divided by l times a delta t times delta q by delta t and let's put the values okay so length is 0 0.1 meters area of cross section 0 0.36 multiplied by our uh, delta t is 100 and here you have delta q is the amount of heat conducted is m times l okay so here itself i will make it m times l so that i can put the values in next step so m is 4.8 kgs and l is 3.36 3.36 into 10 raised to 5 okay is it going outside of screen okay 10 raised to 5 and divided by delta t delta t is 1 r that means 3600 so we need to do this all calculation so 1.24 is the answer let's see the next problem the two ends of a rod of length l and uniform cross sectional area a are kept at two temperatures t1 and t2 t1 is greater than t2 the rate of heat transfer dq by dt through the rod in the steady state is given by tell me so dq by dt is equal to what dq by dt is equal to k times a upon l t1 minus t2 right because t1 is greater than t2 so heat will flow from t1 to t2 so it is option c only okay yes no everyone all right <clears throat> okay so this is just formula based question let's see next one which of the following rods given radius r and length l each made of same material and whose ends are maintained at same temperature will conduct the most heat okay so question is which of the following rods given radius is r okay length l each made of same material and whose ends are maintained at same temperature will conduct the most heat okay so in this question they are made up of same material so that means k is equal okay so you need to find out dq by dt it will be highest in which of these options right so we know that dq by dt is equal to what k multiplied by a by l multiplied by temperature difference and temperature difference is also same so that means you just need to check a by l in all of these okay if a by l is more that means more heat would be conducted because k is same delta t is same right so let's find it out so in option a you have just r naught square divided by l naught in option b you have 2 r naught square divided by l naught that means 4 times r naught square by l naught in option c what do you have r naught square divided by 2 times l naught because radius is r naught and length is 2 l naught and in option d you have 2 times r naught square upon 2 l naught so that is 4 uh, r naught square by 2 l naught so that is 2 times right r naught square by l naught so it is just option b right it's option b okay yes no this one is simple right okay so let's move on to the next one consider two rods of same length and different specific heats s1 s2 conductivity is k1 k2 and area of cross section a1 a2 
and both having temperatures T1 and T2 at their ends if the rate of uh, loss of heat due to the conduction is equal then okay rate, rate of loss of heat due to conduction is equal then what should be the case okay specific heat capacities are given conductivities are given and areas of cross section are given okay tell me rate of loss of heat due to conduction are equal okay so see what is the formula for rate of loss of heat it is just k times a upon l multiplied by delta t that's t1 by t2 right okay so now dq by dt is directly proportional to uh, you can say delta t and the proportionality constant is just k times a upon l okay so same length means it will only depend on ka will it depend on the specific heat capacity rate of loss of heat will it depend on specific heat capacity it will depend but that dependence comes in this thing only okay the dependence will come in conductivity only right so conductivity conductivity would be related to the specific heat capacity okay but here we don't need to think about what's that relation so here it is just dq by dt would be directly proportional to what ka right so if rate of loss of heat is equal and l and delta t is same that means what can you say so if dq1 by dt okay is equal to dq2 by dt so what is dq2 by dt dq2 by dt is equal to here it will be k1 a1 upon l times delta t here it will be k2 a2 upon l times delta t okay and then if these two are equal that means k1 a1 is equal to k2 a2 right don't need to think about the specific heat capacity k1 a1 is equal to k2 a2 this is the answer okay this thing is clear yes no okay so let's talk about the convection uh, we talked a little bit right already but let's see anyways so what is convection let's see what is convection transfer of heat in fluid in which movement of fluid is involved okay so for an example boiling of water okay this is convection how is it convection so here see this is a water in some container okay metal container and you are heating it okay you are heating it at the bottom then what happens here is the water at the bottom gets the heat first and because it gets the heat its density would decrease right because as temperature increases the te uh, density would decrease and as density decreases that water will move up and heavier water from the top it will come down so because of this this kind of currents okay water currents will be started okay this water will move down and water here will move up right and you can actually see that okay so this kind of water currents would be there and because of that the heat gets transferred right in all parts of this fluid or water you can say so this is an example of convection okay so let us see another example of convection that is land breeze and sea breeze so now see this is sea or this is huge lake suppose okay there also it is observable and this is land okay that means there is lot of sand over there okay and here is the sun so the sun will radiate heat okay so that is next type of heat transfer radiation okay by means of electromagnetic waves right so suppose sun rays come over here and sea and land they receive heat at the same time and in equal amounts you can say 
because heat is uniformly distributed in the radiations okay but then what happens uh, the temperature of sea as well as temperature of land will rise but the specific heat capacity of sea is more okay specific heat capacity of water is more compared to that of the land okay so that's why what will happen if specific heat capacity is more that means you need more heat to change its to change its temperature so in daytime the land would be hotter why because it needs lesser heat its specific heat capacity is less so it needs lesser heat uh, to change its temperature okay so land would be hotter compared to that of the sea water and if land is hotter then what will happen the air above the land will become hot okay right so air above the land will get heated compared more compared to that of air above the sea okay so because of that what will happen so this air which is hot its density will decrease so it will move up okay so a low pressure region will be formed over here and because there is the pressure is low there the air from here uh, so here itself there is high pressure so now the air will move like this but this is cold air okay this is cold air compared to what the air over here and that's why uh, when this air flows okay so flow of this air is known as breeze flow of cold air is known as breeze and the air is flowing from sea to land and that's why it is known as sea breeze okay so this will happen at the daytime and then in night time what will happen the land will cool down faster too okay because its specific heat capacity is less so its temperature will change faster if it receives heat then its temperature will increase faster if it releases heat its temperature will decrease faster okay so in the night time what will happen the land will cool down faster compared to that of sea and therefore the temperature of air above the sea would be more because now in daytime both are heated okay in night time there is no sun so they will just release heat but specific heat capacity of sea is more that means its temperature will decrease slower but temperature of land will decrease faster and because of that now what will happen so the air above the sea will be uh, heated in the night time right and the air above the land would be comparatively cooler okay more cool you can say cooler okay so what will happen the air will move from land to sea and this is known as land breeze this thing is clear yes no the land breeze and sea breeze okay so there can be a question like this land breeze and sea breeze they happen because of conduction convection radiation and something else okay so what's the answer convection is the answer okay boiling of water happens because of conduction convection radiation convection is the answer right this is clear everyone okay there can be numericals based upon this thing and so this is convection and then next is radiation so what is radiation so it is mode of transfer of heat by means of electromagnetic waves okay so radiation is it is mode of transfer of heat mode of transfer of heat by means of electromagnetic waves okay electromagnetic electromagnetic waves now what are electromagnetic waves so electromagnetic waves have electric and magnetic fields okay which we will see actually right there is a separate chapter called electromagnetic waves okay but for now they contain electric and magnetic fields they are oscillating okay and they also travel in space and these fields contain some energy so electric field and the magnetic field they contain some energy they have some energy 
and that energy moves along with the fields okay so right so now what is radiation radiation means electromagnetic waves okay so when light comes from sun to you it comes in the form of what electromagnetic waves okay so now there is complete infrared uh, sorry complete spectrum of electromagnetic radiations and out of that infrared visible and ultraviolet rays you can say or waves okay infrared visible light and ultraviolet so the heat is transferred because of these three okay the infrared radiations the visible light and ultraviolet radiations okay for the most part the heat is transferred because of these three okay right so okay so now see these are electromagnetic waves means every wave will have some wavelength now what is wavelength so here the electric field will oscillate like this so there will be this part which is called as crust and this part this is called as trough so combination of a crust and trough is known as what a wave okay so length of this one okay from one crust from the start of crust to end of trough it is known as wavelength right so now different electromagnetic waves will have different wavelengths okay so there is whole electromagnetic spectrum but heat is transferred because of these three mostly so infrared waves you can say or infrared rays their wavelength is greater than 700 nanometers okay then visible light is which uh, visible light is the part of electromagnetic waves where the wavelength is from 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer okay and ultraviolet rays or ultraviolet waves you can say there the wavelength is less than 400 nanometers so heat is mostly transferred because of these these three okay so is this thing clear yes no 